This is the getting started tutorial for the Gravity Engine Unity asset. Welcome. What we're going to do here is take an empty Unity scene and step by step work our way up to a spaceship in orbit around a planet with user input able to change the path of the spaceship. It's kind of the uh, hello world version of Gravity Engine if you like. So to begin with we'll create an empty object and add the central component which you'll need in all your gravity engine scenes called gravity engine which is the singleton class that does the n body gravitational interaction and on rails kepler orbit plotting for all of the objects in the scene more specifically all of the objects in the scene that have an n body component which identifies them as being something that gravity engine should care about the defaults in the Gravity Engine component are fine for our purposes, but just to do a quick tour, under scaling, you can make a choice of units. Depending on what kind of game you're developing, you might be happy with arbitrary units. You might want to work with uh, real world values for things in Earth orbit or solar system values. Those are all options for you. Uh, and trajectory prediction is handled by a different video. We'll set that aside for now. Under advanced, there are a number of controls for the sort of simulation pedigree, as well as controls over whether a gravity engine automatically detects all end bodies or waits to be told explicitly about them, and some options for uh, optimization that we'll talk about in another form. So in order to have something going on in our scene, we need a couple of n-body objects. So let's go ahead and create some. We'll call the first one planet, located at zero, and we'll make gravity engine aware of it by adding an n-body, and we'll set its mass to 100. We're in dimensionless units, so this is essentially a kind of arbitrary choice of mass scale. Notice that as the n-body script is added, the transform changes slightly. Uh, and there's some reasons for that that uh, I'll go into shortly. Uh, in order to see the planet, we'll add as a child a sphere. Can make it a little bit bigger, say four, and give it a bit of an appearance. Let's maybe take this uh, IO texture, and there we have our planet. And then we'll create a second object, which we'll call ship. We'll also give it an n-body component. Now, with regards to a planet, the gravitational mass of a ship is essentially zero. So typically, those objects are just given mass of zero. And in order to visualize this, we'll go into our prefabs folder and we'll grab this uh, station model and attach it to the ship as a child. And we'll position our ship at x equals 10. And there we see our ship. And it's perhaps a little bit large. Let's make it, say, 0.2. And so now we have two n-body objects in the scene, a planet and a ship. And we will go ahead and press play. And Gravity Engine will detect those. And the planet will pull on the ship. The ship will go through the planet because we haven't done anything with uh, collision detection or colliders at this point, And then go flying at the other side. And that's pretty much the simplest scene we could do with the ship. Now, generally, we want the ship in some kind of orbit around the planet, so we can do that manually by giving the ship some initial velocity. So if we want it to go around the planet, let's give it some velocity in the y direction here. So let's say 3, just sort of a guess to see what happens. And with that initial velocity, the ship now heads off away, but the planet pulls on it and it reappears. So let's just make our camera a little farther away, say minus 30. Let's get to a background, makes things nice and clear. And now you can see, so we press play again, the full path of the ship going around. Now, one of the things that's very common with an object like this that's under n-body motion, where it's force and direction, 
are being updated every frame is you'd like to see the complete path, the orbit, the objects in around the planet. Gravity Engine provides a mechanism for that called an orbit predictor. So we'll create a new child object on the ship and call it orbit predictor and we'll add an orbit predictor component. This will automatically add a line renderer and then the orbit predictor itself has a couple of key fields in the inspector that we need to specify. The first is we need to say what are we predicting the orbit around, what's the center object, which is the planet, what are we predicting the orbit for, and that's the ship. And we can control the number of points uh, and then there's some other more specific case attributes that we'll just set aside for now. And now if we press play, we see that the line renderer shows a horrendous pink circle for the path of the orbit. So we can clean that up a little bit by going into our resources and finding a material like say red, putting that on our orbit predictor and going into the line renderer changing our width to say 0.1. And now when we press play, we get a nicer view of the orbit. Now this is the orbit that results from a velocity of three at a distance of 10 around an object of mass 100. It's not quite a circle. In order to make it exactly a circle, we would have to figure out the precise velocity required. We could go do some physics and figure that out. But if we were to change the radius, we'd have to update it. If we were to change the mass of the planet, we would have to update it. And that all sounds like way too much work. So instead, what we do is we add another very commonly used and important class in Gravity Engine called Orbit Universal. So we'll add this to the ship. We'll tell this ship that we want the orbit around the planet. And boom, it shows us in the inspector as a gizmo the orbit of the planet based on the parameters here. So we can make this orbit bigger if we want to. We can, we, we can change its eccentricity. So if we make it 0.2, we get a bit of an ellipse. If we were to make it 1.1, eccentricity is greater than one or hyperbolas, so we would get a hyperbola. Let's go back to 0.2. And if we want to change the axes of the ellipse, we can do that by moving omega, which controls where the angle zero line is. And then the other attributes here, lowercase omega, inclination and starting phase, all control the orientation of the orbit in space. Let's just set that back to zero. Now notice that the transform has changed and the position is set based on these orbital attributes. So if I go say back to 10, then the closest point of the orbit is actually gonna be 8.33. There's a parameter choice when specifying this orbit. I can define it using eccentricity and what's called the semi-parameter, but it might be more useful to describe it in terms of say apogee and perigee. And so you can do that here if you'd like to. So if I would like the apogee to be 10, and the perigee to be five, we can do that as well. So then we can go ahead and press play. And the orbit predictor shows that the orbit is in fact the one we want. And this orbit predictor is actually recomputing the orbit every frame so that if the spaceship were influenced by, for example, a nearby moon or another passing mass, then that orbit shape would automatically change as that interaction occurred. The other option we have with this orbit universal is the evolve mode. So when it's in gravity engine mode, the orbit is evolving uh, using n body, every mass pushing and pulling on every other mass, pulling. Uh, if you change it to Kepler's equation, then that means that this spaceship is locked into this orbit. It's basically on rails and it will describe this path around that body. Even if that body moves, it'll still be in this path around that body. 
And that can be useful if you're finding that, as is usually the case in sort of three-body interactions, say this planet had a moon and the moon was starting to goof up the spaceship orbit and you didn't want that in your game, then you could lock the spaceship into this particular orbit. Even in Kepler's equation, you can still apply impulses to the spaceship and it will show you the new Kepler orbit around the planet under those circumstances. So anyway, we'll just go back to gravity engine mode for now. So the final thing we want to do is show how to make the ship do something based on user input. So in order to do that, we need to resort to a little bit of scripting. There's a pre-made component that we can add to the ship, which is just about the simplest way uh, you can apply some motion to a ship. So I've got this getting started ship script. And if we go and look at that script, and in the update function, we're going to check to see if the key pressed is W. And in the case where the key pressed is W, we're going to get a reference to gravity engine by using gravity engine dot instance. If you do this a lot, you probably would assign that to a local variable. And we're going to use the API and call something called apply impulse. We're going to apply the impulse to the ship and we're going to use the thrust value from the attribute that's public here and just do it in the plus Y direction. If you wanted to do this more generally, you could do the whole WASD, Q and E keys and do uh, all the cardinal directions. So if we go back to the scene now and we have our getting started ship attached, getting started ship script attached and press play. We can press the W key and we can see that the orbit does change, in fact, fairly dramatically. So we could lower our thrust, say by a factor of 10, and go ahead. And then we get more fine-grained changes in the orbit. Bear in mind, this is always working in the same direction. So depending on which part of the orbit we're in, it'll affect the orbit a little bit differently. And that gets us to where we want it to be, which is a demonstration of how to put a ship in orbit and give it some rudimentary user control. It's a good way to get started with Gravity Engine. There are more tutorials available on the YouTube channel and documentation at nbodyphysics.com. Thanks for your attention.